What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we have a super exciting vlog. But first I must shove all of this down my throat as quickly as possible and then we will speak in the car. It is quinoa, spaghetti, squash, chicken, yay, okay, bye. Clearly I am a failure at life because as you can see, it is a new day. I did not end up vlogging yesterday when I got in my car. Really dropped the ball on that one, but it's okay because here we are now and we have some tea to spill. We have some things to talk about, some really exciting things. There is just so much that is going on that I have not told you guys about, but also like it all just happened within the last like three weeks. Like this all happened so fast. So the reason I was in a rush yesterday is because I was actually looking at apartments. But before you're like, Clancy, what's wrong with yours? Oh my gosh, you're moving? No, I'm not moving, but my brother it's freaking moving to Cincinnati, which for those of you who have followed my videos for a long time, you actually kind of know my brother. I used to vlog with him, which <laughs> I really should delete half those vlogs. They were just a mess. But back in the day when I would visit him, sometimes I'd whip out the vlog camera, it would make for some great content. My brother and I though have not lived in the same state in a decade. He went off into the Marine Corps when he was 18 years old. He's three years older than me. Since then, he's just been living in North Carolina, and obviously I was in New York and then Ohio, but I've been telling Neil that he needs to move out of North Carolina for forever now. He lives in Wilmington, North Carolina, and everyone in my family has been telling him this, and he knows it. There's just nothing for him there. He moved there right when he got out of the Marine Corps because he was dating his ex-girlfriend at the time, but then they broke up. Since then, he's had multiple ex-girlfriends there that have kind of kept him there, but now he is a single man, and there's just no point of him being there. He lives in Wilmington, and he doesn't even like the beach. Like, he's not even benefiting from it in the slightest. So, about like three weeks ago, I just randomly called him up, because I told him I love Cincinnati and Ohio, and he just like doesn't believe me. He actually had this thing where he hated Ohio for no reason. No reason at all, it just didn't make sense. But anyway, called him up, and I was like, so, are you moving to Cincinnati? And he was just like, I don't even know what he said. He was just like, yeah, I guess I could. It, it, like, it was just the most not dramatic thing ever. I feel like in my family, we're kind of like that. We're not like, I don't know, we don't make like big productions of things. Like, it's just like, oh, cool. This is happening and it's happening really fast because he called up a few apartment complexes and that is where I came in because he didn't want to come up just to look at apartments. He was like, I trust you. He gave me a few and then this, is the winner. This is the one that I looked at yesterday and it is very close to me. Like I thought, I was like, okay, maybe we'll be living like 25, 30 minutes away, but no, this one is extremely close by and it was perfect. His one requirement, actually he had a couple cause well, he has animals, he has a dog and a cat. So he wanted some sort of like outdoor space, which is awesome because this place does have a bark park where the dog can run around. Also he has the outdoor space on the, it's like a little patio out front or I guess in the back. And he also really wanted a washer dryer, which he didn't have a big budget. Like he's very against spending a lot of money on rent, which I'm all for. At the end of the day, he's probably gonna be spending more than me just cause he lives alone. Obviously I split my rent with Zach, so. He didn't care about like granite countertops and hardwood floors. So the place I looked at was the unrenovated version, which, oh my gosh, he got a steal on this place, I think. It is priced very well for what he is getting. Like, I can't believe how cheap it is. I don't know, I feel weird saying my brother's apartment price on here. It's his business, not mine, but let's just say it is under $1,000. And it is all happening so fast, but I'm so excited. I mean, I can't believe I'm gonna have a family member living so close to me. I haven't had that in years, obviously, when I randomly took off and moved to Ohio. So this just feels awesome. I'm so excited. And in case you're wondering, for the past couple of weeks, Neil has been quarantining and he's driving here, not flying. So I'm really excited. I just looked at the apartment and there was mold everywhere. Really? Yeah, like it was so bad. Where? Like in the bathroom and even in the living room. Damn. Yeah. That sucks. I know. Did you say anything about it? I mean, we were just like, is that like common? And she's just like, I don't know, like that's something you'd have to fix on your own. F that. Yeah. I don't even be <laughs> I don't even believe you. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, no, that's just, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> you have to fix it on your own oh my gosh no we saw it and I, th I thought it looked perfect guys there is terror in my heart right now do you see this 
30 degrees. As if that's not bad enough, oh no, it is gonna drop to 27 degrees for my 7 a.m. live shots. This is not good, but we are prepared. I have the thickest turtleneck sweater on. I get so many questions from you guys asking where I get my turtlenecks because I have one in like every color. First of all, I thought it funny because anytime I'm wearing one of these, I feel so disgusting just because they're so chunky and it's just funny that you guys ask about them. But I get them from Land's End and they have lots of colors and they're thick and I like them. So I recommend that. And then also, I have my uh, ski pants on. And I just do not mess around. My new rule is if it is like below 42 degrees, the ski pants are coming out. They just have to. And I actually have to run out the door for my live shots right now. But one thing I wanted to mention is I am listening to an audiobook, which is my first audiobook ever. It is not by choice. I have nothing against audiobooks, but I just love reading and I like listening to podcasts. I'm, I have so many podcasts to listen to that audiobooks just doesn't make sense. But my library only had the audiobook version of this. Have you guys heard of this? It's called You're Not Special by Megan Ray. It came out quite a while ago, but I'm just getting around to it now, and I'm sure all of you guys know who Megan Ranks is. Megan Rosette, she is like an OG YouTuber. When I first found her back in the day when I was in high school, I was so obsessed. To be honest, I don't even follow her on social media or watch her videos anymore, and that's no shade, no tea, no shade, you know, as they say. I don't know, she doesn't really post that much, I don't think, or not my style, I don't know, but I used to love watching her videos, and I was interested to see what her book was going to be like. I am 6 hours 32 minutes in, and I have an hour and 42 minutes left, and so far it's pretty interesting. I think it's really interesting always seeing the behind the scenes of YouTubers, like certain things she was going through with her college roommates that bullied her out of college pretty much, and it's like, oh my gosh, like wow, all of that was going on, but I was still watching her videos, and like little did I know all these little things were going on, and I'm actually about to get into the chapter about why she like no longer speaks to her mom and I just can't imagine that so I'm very curious as to like what the deal is and what went on so I'm going to listen to this audiobook as I travel 30 minutes to my live shot location we're going to a farm oh yes we are going to a farm one minute I'm sitting at home all by my lonesome prepared to go outside and then next guys we've got company we have got company as you can tell we are here with the turkeys how are you guys all doing how are you feeling how about you this is the story of the morning we are here at a turkey farm. There's a lot of them. There is definitely a lot of them. Hey, Sheila, usually this is the magical Thanksgiving Day equation. We've got lots of food plus lots of family equals lots of fun. But in a year when we are asked to avoid large gatherings, we take out with my magical glove the lots of family. Do we still have the lots of food? Well, the answer is yes, here at Chua's Farm. As you can tell, the turkeys are here. They are flapping away. We have got a bunch of them. I am their fearless leader this morning. Wow, they love me. They really do, I promise. This is a little skit we rehearse. But yes, the turkeys are here. They have about 3,000 of them ready to sell. That is what they typically sell in a year, but obviously this year is more of a toss up than ever before. Yes, I've already stepped in turkey poop, but this, guys, this is a day in the life of a TV news reporter. <laughs> and honestly, I haven't done a fun story like this in so long, so this feels so good. Just with the pandemic, we haven't been doing as many like in-person fun activity things. So this is just, I'm back in my element, guys. I'm back in it. We're living life, even though I really need to figure out that whole turkey poop situation on my boot. There is a potential problem this year. It's a great problem to have if you want a delicious turkey, but definitely not the best timing. Guys, knock it off back there. I feel like a teacher. Every morning, I pour myself a giant glass of water that I will drink as I'm getting ready, as I'm writing my scripts, but it is 3.45 in the morning, and we're gonna have to dump this water because I just got called to breaking news and TMI, but when I'm on a breaking news situation, I honestly can't have a lot of liquid in me because it's just gonna make me have to go to the bathroom. So I have to put that there. We are gonna have to run out the door. There is a fire about a half hour away from my house. Morning everyone, we start with breaking news this half hour once again out of Fairfield. That's where several people are displaced following an early morning fire. Local 12's Clancy Burke is on the scene and has the newest information. Clancy? Hey, Sheila, I just spoke with a woman who lives inside this apartment complex, and she tells me she woke up this morning to police officers banging on her door. That was at around 1.30, and right now at 6.30, this is what the apartment complex looks like. At the risk of sounding super cliche, I will always be so amazed by people. My job can oftentimes feel very negative because we are covering negative situations, bad situations, heartbreaking situations. On that fire I was at this morning, when finally we were able to look at the damage of the building and then when we were seeing people in their pajamas who were standing outside my heart seriously like hurt it 
how could it not? How could it not? I mean, that is your home. The people I spoke with were just so kind and positive and it will always be the best part about this job. The people you meet who I would never ever meet. If I didn't have this job, I would be fast asleep in my bed not knowing all the things that are going on in this world. But instead, I'm in my car driving to a fire at 3.45 in the morning, and I'm, I get to meet all these wonderful people. And one thing, this is actually a tip for any reporters out there, we are really far away from the fire scene, and one thing if you're a reporter, you never cross the caution tape. There was caution tape up very far away, so I didn't have access to speak to any of the firefighters or the fire chief, and there, you just, you can't, you can't go across it. You have to stay there. I really wanted information. I called dispatch, or the police department, I don't even remember which one it was, and they said they were gonna be sitting on a press release, but I kind of pushed a little bit, and I got some information, but I hesitated to share that information, and I decided to hold back. And I am so glad I did because that information was actually not correct. It was that no one was hurt when in reality one person was taken to the hospital. I have been burned before and I've learned before the hard way that sometimes when you call someone who's not at the scene, whether it's dispatch, you don't get the correct information. I mean, it's like that game telephone when we were little, right? It's relayed to this person and that person, that person. Information can change a little bit. Would it have been the worst thing in the world if I went on air and reported no one was hurt and then 30 minutes later I said, actually, we just got an update. One person was taken to the hospital hospital. No, it wouldn't have been the worst thing in the world, but that, that's just not good. So I decided to hang back with that information until I could speak with the fire chief, which is hard to do because it is so tempting just to get all the information you can out there. That is your job. You want to do it now. And there is nothing worse than going live with not a lot of information because no matter how much you have, you're live at 5 a.m. So it's tempting just to spit out everything you know, but I'm glad I hung back with that. I'm glad I was able to speak with the fire chief, get the info, and that is a little tip that I can give you guys. But now I'm on to the second half of my day where I'm working on a story for tomorrow all about Thanksgiving travel, which the CDC has recommended or not even just recommended, urge people not to travel. Still though, millions of people are planning on traveling, so I'm gonna interview a spokesperson from the airport, see what they're doing there, what's going on there. But first, you guys know what I'm gonna say. You know it, it is, it's, you know it. It's oatmeal time, and actually, oatmeal time, because I'm pretty sure there's like, two oats left in this thing. <laughs> I'm a monster. So we're just gonna pour this in here, throw this in the measuring cup, break out our local 12 mug, dump this in, get a nice spoonful of cocoa powder, bam. And then right now you're expecting me to go into my fridge and take out my maple syrup, but that's not gonna be happening. Ew, what is on, what the? Ew, it got everywhere. No, lately I've been using a banana to sweeten my oatmeal instead and I am loving it and I know this banana is disgusting. I don't know what to tell you, it is the only one left because this is our banana stash and as you can see, there is no stash, it is empty. This is the only one I have. It is slim pickings here, but honestly, the more ripe it is, the sweeter, so I don't even mind it. And I don't have diabetes because I know people with diabetes actually have to watch out for that. Oh my gosh. Ew, do you guys, this was a clean, this was supposed to be a clean knife. Joke's on me, that's disgusting. There we go. Normally I'll do about this much. And I'll kinda just, you know, give a little chop chop like that. And then a little bit of water. Not too much. Oh, that might have been too much. Let's see, the moment of truth, was it too much? No, this is perfect, oh my gosh. I am just an oatmeal goddess, what can I say? Who else agrees that I need oatmeal merch? Like, that would just be so iconic. Oh, this is just looking so good, but we have to let it sit for like five minutes. Also, this is the current living room sitch. Zach and I remodeled and we thought this is really just the setup that looks the best because when you have the couches kind of at this angle, it just opens up the rest of the room and it just like is really appealing to the eye. Obviously, I am kidding. If you follow me on Instagram, you already know that over the weekend, we literally stayed in all weekend and we're looking for fun things to do. So we decided to push the couches together and create this cute little bed in our living room. And someone commented on my Instagram asking, why didn't you just watch TV in your bedroom? First of all, that's not as fun. Second of all, we are watching the show The Undoing on HBO and we only have HBO on this TV out here, not in the bedroom. So that is why, and by the way, if you haven't already watched The Undoing, oh my, it's the best show ever and I never get into shows. I never like shows. I'm the worst. It sucks I am like a broken human who just really cannot sit through one episode even it it's a disorder 
but this show, oh my gosh. Also, guess what? My oatmeal is now ready. I'm just sensing it. Look at that. Look at that. This is amazing. Finally, I am done with my work. I just did an interview and then my web script and I know you don't care, so I'm gonna cut to the chase because I have kind of a funny story. So, actually, this is not funny. The reason I'm texting my friend is because I'm stressed out. This is a holiday week. Thanksgiving is in two days. That means I need to plan so ahead of time because people are gonna be unreachable. They're on vacation, so. I'm just trying to plan everything out in my head and I'm also trying to plan out where I'm gonna go live for Black Friday this year. A lot of stores are not letting us inside just because of the pandemic. So I texted my friend Rachel asking, yo, where are you going live? Cause she is a morning reporter in Baltimore. I met her in my first market in Dayton, which first of all, I don't think I've ever given Rachel, actually Rachel's appeared on this channel, but I've never given her a solo shout out. She is a few years older than me and she arrived in Dayton like two weeks after I did. We started at the same exact time. I was a really stupid girl right out of college, truly, like a dumpster fire, an absolute dumpster fire. And Rachel is the epitome of just, oh my gosh, she like just was so kind to me, was so helpful, never condescending and judgmental, and that is something, honestly, that you will find in this business. And a lot of people, are not nice to the new person because you just look like a mess. The funny thing about Rachel is she told me that about a year ago she was getting on a plane and she was just waiting for it to board and she decided to just pop in her AirPods and watch my latest video. Well, once she was done with my video, she closed her phone, looked up, the plane had already boarded. While she was so engrossed in my YouTube video, the plane boarded, she missed her flight. But no, now I am just rambling and I actually think I want to start a new vlog tomorrow, kind of just going over more about working the holidays and I have a conundrum that I'm not gonna say right now. Stay tuned for my next vlog to hear my conundrum. A lot of exciting things are ahead. A lot of exciting things because actually my brother gets in tonight. That's insane, I don't know if I'll see him tonight though, probably not just because I think he's getting in late and I have a bedtime and you know how it is. Actually, I do have to see him because I have to give him his mattress because he ordered it here. Anyway, now I'm just thinking out loud. I'll talk to you guys later. You're the best. I love you. Bye.